I'm Tom Saunders, and I'm President and CEO of the Western Pennsylvania Conservancy. Thank you so much for making time in your schedule for this today. Uh, one of the wonderful programs that we have at the Conservancy is our Urban Forestry Program. And it's just an amazing group of people. It's an amazing set of projects they do. Uh, our urban forestry um, staff have planted 37,000 trees around our urban area over the last few years. And one of the most interesting and fun and visually spectacular projects um, among our urban forestry projects is the Redbud project. And we are in our fifth year of that, which is hard to believe. Um, in that specific program, we have planted 3,000 trees already and 1,500 of those are red buds. So you're seeing their, their blooms around the city and around the region currently since they're at their peak. I would like to introduce one of our urban foresters, Brian Crooks, who's deeply involved in that program, who will tell us a bit about it and he will, he will introduce some other speakers along the way also. Um, I'll encourage you to use the question and answer function if you have questions and, and we'll get to those uh, later in our webinar this morning. But for now, Brian, I'll turn this over to you. Thank you, Tom. I appreciate the introduction. Thank you all of you for joining today to talk about our wonderful Pittsburgh Redbud project and a happy Earth Day to all of you as well. It's a wonderful day to talk about trees. I'll get started here at the beginning by introducing uh, Frank Dawson. He is a landscape architect who has worked with us for much of the Redbud project. And Frank, if you could get us started a little bit broadly, talk about yourself and talk about how the project came to you and how you were able to conceptualize this idea of bringing all these beautiful pink trees to Pittsburgh. Sure, so um, I, uh, thanks, for, thanks a lot, Brian. I, um, I, I grew up in Pittsburgh. I was here when the city was gritty and hazy and uh, watched that, uh, the, the mills disappear and, and now we have this beautiful place to beautify. Um, and uh, at a time when the, the rivers were kind of, we turned our back on the rivers and they were a transportation channel um, and now we're embracing them and looking to them as an amenity. Um, so a lot of people ask, how did the Redbud project idea come to be? Uh, I used to travel from Pittsburgh to Brooklyn uh, frequently. And in the spring, when I was driving along the highway, very much like this image you see in front of you, I would see the red buds blooming up on the ridge tops and above the tunnels. Uh, so it's a six hour drive each direction. And so that gives you a lot of time to think. So I often wondered if there was a way that we could bring it back to Pittsburgh and, and turn it into something spectacular here. Um, so uh, how did we do it? Um, so I sit on an advisory board for the Pittsburgh Downtown Partnership. And it's called Paris to Pittsburgh. And we typically meet once a month. Um, the board, there are really a lot of smart people on the board and I, um, I really value their opinion. So one morning before our meeting, I um, grabbed a Google map and I drew these pink lines on here along the rivers and said, what if we planted a bunch of red bud trees along the river? And I think I calculated 3000 trees uh, we would need. Um, and I took to the meeting at the end of the meeting, I said, what do you think? And everybody really loved the idea. So um, they said, you should talk to somebody at River Life Task Force. Fortunately, I had a friend there at River Life and um, she said, well, I'm meeting with some folks on Monday. Why don't you put a proposal together? So I, I cobbled together some of my ideas and, and thoughts and put them in a little booklet and I gave it off to her. And um, at that Monday morning meeting, I guess uh, the Conservancy was there and they, they really grabbed onto the idea. So that's how um, it got kicked off. And um, so why are we doing it? Well, there's a lot of reasons why to do it. I mean, I mean, beautification is one aspect of it and it's really the idea that really uh, you know, pulled, pulled my heart. But um, also there's a lot of benefits with, to our environment. I mean, so, so I think those are, those are the wonderful things about it. Um, and the haziness of our city and the grittiness and maybe that perception can be changed that, you know, we are a beautiful city. Um, so as Brian uh, goes through his slideshow here, I think, uh, I think you'll see how beautiful the city is and how the red buds kind of complement what, um, what the city can be. 
Yeah, thanks, Frank. We're just looking here at a, just a quick drone clip that we took just a few days ago. We have a wonderful GIS manager here at the Conservancy, Brad Georgic, and he's also a certified drone pilot. And we were able to get out and on a beautiful spring morning when the sun was going very nicely before the snow came earlier this week and get some great shots of uh, taking that, that conceptual image that Frank had, had proposed and then actually seeing the reality of that here in the video you're watching. Next, I'll introduce our Director of Community Forestry here at the Conservancy, Jeff Bergman. And Jeff, if you could talk to us about how the funding came to be. We heard from Frank about the ideas and we're seeing some of the realization of that here on the screen, but of course everything takes funding. So Jeff, if you could introduce how that came to be. Sure, absolutely. Thanks, Brian. Hi, everybody. Happy Earth Day. Um, really glad to be here with you. Um, you know, I think the stars really aligned around this project. Um, you know, a lot of folks around Pittsburgh and Allegheny County have gotten to know the Conservancy through our Tree Vitalized Pittsburgh project um, and know our planting success through that project. So we planted 34,000 trees, uh, you know, just through Tree Vitalized. So we have a really good planting model where we have our foresters and our volunteers. So when Frank brought the idea to River Life, um, River Life connected us. Um, and so Frank, you know, shared his wonderful idea with us. And um, we were, we had been asked uh, by the Colcom Foundation for some ideas for a project for their 25th anniversary. And um, they heard the idea for the Redbud project and loved it, just like we did. And just like a lot of people have. Uh, so Colcom has funded all, we're, we're currently in phase four uh, in our, in, at our five year anniversary. And Colcom has provided four very generous grants totaling over $2 million so far, so far just for this, this project. So um, we've been able to implement it um, with Frank as our advisor and Brian as our, uh, our main forester. Um, and we had a lot of partners and Brian will talk about that. So I'll let you take it away, Brian. Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> and before I move on, in case you're wondering, does the red bud logo on the left, is that purposely meant to mirror the three rivers of Pittsburgh, the Allegheny and the Monongahela joining at the point to form the Ohio? You are correct. Good eye if you caught that. I'll move on now and talk a bit about our community forestry program here at the Conservancy. So we all realize at this point that yes, red buds are a wonderful project. We should bring them here to the city. We got the funding to do that, but how do we actually plant all those trees, they just don't show up overnight. So we have a wonderful community forestry model already in place, as Jeff mentioned, through other programs such as Tree Vitalize. And we wanted to take that same level of engagement and get people out and teach them about trees and just show them what they can do when you get a whole group of people from the community together. We'll just go through some images here from some of these volunteer events. We don't always have fancy signs and t-shirts and cookies at every planting, but this was the kickoff event at the very beginning of Red Bud back in the spring of 2016. We had lots of trees to give away, lots of trees to plant. And one thing we do as well is we have a very strong engagement model here that we teach people about trees and teach them how to plant trees. And I'll introduce Alicia Worley. She's here at the center of the photograph. Uh, she is our community forestry project coordinator. And what Alicia does here is she does a lot of the work involving these people and how they come to be at our events and making sure that all the events run smoothly. So Alicia, I'll run through some photos. If you could just talk to us about what you do and the people that come and help us plant. Sure, thank you, Brian. Hi everyone, thanks for coming. I'm excited to talk more about this project. And like Brian said, I'm the project coordinator. So I make sure that we have everything that we need to have these volunteer events run smoothly. Um, we make sure that essentially I tell people, you know, just come ready to plant trees. We'll, we'll do everything else. We'll make sure you know what you do. We'll make sure you have what you need, but you just gotta come excited, ready to plant. So we make sure the trees are on site. We bring the tools, we bring the mulch, we bring gloves and safety vests for the volunteers. We give them food at the end of the event. And most importantly, we make sure we give them a nice introduction about what the project is, what we're doing, why we're doing it, um, the benefits of trees and the training 
demo here. So this is a picture of a demonstration. We always give a planting demo at the beginning to show people how to plant a tree properly. Um, we always like to ask people how many of them have planted trees with a raise of hands. And sometimes you'll get a lot of people and sometimes you'll just get one or two. So we make sure to go through and give them every step so they know what's expected and how to do it correctly because we have found that's a really big part of the success of the project and the trees is making sure we're doing it right. It's the most important day of this tree's life is what we always tell the volunteers. Um, it's a very fun event. I think people always enjoy tree plantings because it's very hands-on. You're learning a lot. It's very tangible whenever you look and you see all these beautiful trees that you just helped physically put in the ground. And we always make sure to tell the volunteers that we couldn't do it without them. We need these volunteers to come out. And it's always nice that they'll come out on a Saturday morning for a couple hours and help us plant trees. And I think they're, they're very fun events too. Um, people learn a lot, they have a lot of fun and they can take that knowledge home with them. They know how to plant a tree or they may be walking on the trail and they'll remember, hey, I planted that tree and they'll be very excited about it. It's, it's a big part of the community forestry model. Um, I have great staff that's always there to help make sure you know, everything's running in order and everybody knows where they need to be and to answer questions. And we couldn't do it without them as well as the nice staff picture of us with red buds around us on one of our sites Brian will talk about later. Um, unfortunately, due to COVID, we haven't had volunteer events, but we are looking forward to when we can get back to that and have volunteers out with us because we do miss our volunteers. They're a big part of the project. Thanks, Alicia. Yeah, I think, think we all are looking forward to the day when we will be back to sharing trees and celebrating spring and fall with, with volunteers uh, throughout many different plantings. I, I look forward to that very much. Of course, the tree planting begins several months perhaps in advance when we're planning planting sites and planning what we're going to bring to each location. This is me up at one of our tree nurseries that we source trees from, tagging some redbud trees in preparation for an upcoming planting season. And when we're planning for the spring, we start tagging trees in the winter. So it's sometimes a cold winter day out there, but we're always looking at the trees and knowing what's coming to us. That's one thing we like to say with our community forestry projects is we actually go up and hand tig and see all the trees before they're even dug out of the nursery. So we know that we're getting good material that will transplant well and, and bring a lot of good joy here to the city. The trees then come down to us in sometimes very large deliveries. Uh, here's one on a giant flatbed tractor trailer. If you're wondering what it feels like to be a tree on top of a tractor trailer, here's your viewpoint. Probably looks something like this as you make your journey down uh, here to our city. We take the trees off the trailer, we ball cart them into place and put every tree in place. That way, that when the volunteers show up, like Alicia said, all they have to worry about is just planting the tree. There's no questions about where the tree goes, what tree goes where, what tools are needed. We've already done all that heavy lifting and gotten everything in place to just make it a very smooth event. There's also very good site prep done in advance. So if you've come to one of our tree plantings before, you know the digging is oftentimes uh, pretty easy to do. We have that soil prepared in advance. We have any existing material like rocks taken away and there's good topsoil left over. We have mulch beds that are cut. We have invasive plants that are removed. We have stumps and roots that aren't there anymore as well. So everything is done in place to make these events very well for the people that come, but also too for the trees that we plant uh, throughout that day. And we also come back and take care of our trees for many years afterwards. We always like to let people know that we're not just planting trees and walking away. We're going to come back and we're going to make sure that we do everything as a group that we need to to help these trees transplant successfully. So here's a picture of Alicia. She's on the right underneath this red bud tree, cutting back some of this knotweed that has tried to grow over and take over that place. We'll cage trees that might get browsed by deer. So we also plant trees that are not red buds. This is an eastern white pine. And if you're a deer in the middle of winter and there's nothing left to eat, you like to come over to the pine tree. So this cage will keep that from happening. And we try to engage those volunteers again. So get them back out. They came and they planted trees with us one day. Maybe next year they come back and help us mulch or they're helping us prune or they're looking at ways that we could keep fostering these trees over time. So get them out, get their hands dirty and let them see the reward uh, as they've moved forward from the planting. It's been a dry summer uh, last year. You may recall that Pittsburgh had two of its wettest seasons in 2018 and 2019, but trust me, 2020 was definitely nothing like that. Uh, you can see Alicia here watering these trees. They needed quite a lot of help to stay watered over the last year. 
I'll also introduce and joining with us today, Melissa Burnett. She is our current Community Forestry Fellow. She comes to us from the Pittsburgh Pulse Program, which stands for Pittsburgh Urban Leadership Service Experience. And while Melissa has helped us with a whole lot of different types of tree maintenance, she was really involved with our tree pruning over the winter. So uh, Melissa, let's hear some of your thoughts on how some of that pruning went. Hi everyone, as Brian mentioned, I'm the Community Forestry Fellow. Um, in my position, I do lots of maintenance, including watering, mulching, and all that fun stuff, but we also do winter pruning. And so we get to go out on the coldest days of the year, we get to bundle up and we get to prune some trees. And pruning is super important because um, it helps us uh, maintain the structure of maintain the structural integrity of the tree and it also we remove any dead branches and um, dying decaying branches to make sure that the tree is just functioning at its best and um, we can promote new growth and also so it's looking great um, so we always try to make sure to return back to um, locations that we planted in the previous years and so this is a picture of um, some volunteers planting a tree and then a few years later Brian comes back and he prunes this tree and yeah pruning is super important and something that we always try to make sure to do so I'll send the Mac or send the mic right back to Brian. Thanks Melissa yeah it was a lot of fun pruning it was a also a great way for us to get out and still take care of trees in the the, the past year of the pandemic pruning is a very easy activity for social distancing. So we all pick a tree and make some good cuts and uh, it's a great day to bond together and make our trees look good like this one here in the image. As Tom mentioned at the very beginning, we planted thousands of trees and this is just a, a, a brief map here to show you some of the locations we've planted. Pink is areas that have been planted, yellow are areas that we're looking to move to in the future. And we've uh, really encompassed what we like to call the view shed of downtown. So if you're here at the center, if you're in downtown Pittsburgh, if you're at the point, you spin out here and do a 360, what are you looking at? Let's see some pink on the North Shore Trail. Let's see some pink on Mount Washington. See pink as you enter and exit downtown Pittsburgh. Then also work our way up and down the rivers. As Frank mentioned in that map, he had drawn those pink lines along each side of the river. So how can we incorporate that in our riparian areas, along our riverfront trails, and foster some, some great watershed benefits and recreational benefits too. We've planted thousands of trees, whether they're the larger landscape trees or whether they're smaller restoration trees and containers or tree tubes. And many of them have been red buds, but we do plant many, many species. You can see there's several species of, of landscape trees, several of restoration trees. We plant enough red buds, of course, to be impactful and to get that cultural benefit of having the pink but also to making sure that we're not planting a monoculture. We don't wanna um, have pests or diseases come through that favor certain tree species. So we're planting many species to complement the red buds as well. And we couldn't do it without partners. There are lots of partners who've helped us all throughout the years. Uh, no particular order here. You can see the list here. I'm not going to read through them all, but I, I certainly speak for the rest of the group when I thank them all for their work. They've helped us with plantings, helped us with locating sources for trees, helped us for finding places to plant them and also working with volunteers. So many hands make light work and uh, we've definitely seen that happen with all the partnerships we've made. There's something nice about that too. I mean, the, so you have the partners and you have the volunteers and I mean, it is Pittsburgh and it is where we live, it's our home and um, everybody's working together to make it a better place to live. So I think it's a really important uh, point to make that uh, we're all working together and it, it um, it's important. I mean, this is our home and this is where we want, we want to have good health and, and a good environment to live in. So. Absolutely, yeah. We, we want a great city and it takes many aspects of that city to just help, and help us all do wonderful things. And it, it's been great to meet many people through all those partnerships too. I, I've met so many people through the Red Bud Project. It's been wonderful to make, make so many great connections. As we go through the remainder of the, of the presentation here today, we're gonna highlight just a couple of the sites. This won't cover everything. We've definitely planted in many more areas of the city, but we wanna take a look at just a few of the really key locations that really um, are impactful with the different site conditions or the landmarks you may be familiar with if you've come to Pittsburgh or seen Pittsburgh online or in the news. So let's just take a quick look at some of these different sites. We'll start at the North Shore Riverfront Park. This is where we started with Redbud way back in the spring of 2016, uh, going from the uh, Pirates Baseball Stadium all the way down to the Carnegie Science Center. We'll highlight the Science Center a bit more as we include an aspect of some of the rain gardens that are complementing the redbud planting areas. 
We'll move up the river a bit along the River Avenue on the Allegheny River. We've done a large scale riparian effort here. You, if you have been biking in Pittsburgh or walking your dog, you may have seen a very large project happening around the Veterans Bridge. We'll talk about that a bit more. Then we'll hop across the river to the Point State Park and also some of the major entrances to the city at the Gateway Islands. Across the Mond, we'll go to Mount Washington, extending from the West End Overlook at the top of your screen, all the way down to about where the Liberty Bridge is. The South Shore of the Mond from Station Square and the Pittsburgh Riverhound Soccer Stadium down to the Smithfield Street Bridge. And finally, uh, another aspect up here on, in the Hill District is you're coming down Bigelow Boulevard above the Strip District. There's a park called Frank Curto Park and we planted several trees up there too. So let's take a quick look at, at the North Shore. We'll go through some images here just to show how we've made these plantings happen. Hundreds and hundreds of trees all the way from PNC Park down to the Science Center. And we're even planting several more here this season as well. This is back from 2016 at the Great Lawn. Started with just a, a large open lawn space. And then instead we brought in some redbud trees, some other complementary shrubs and smaller material. And that's really popped over the years. Here looking towards Heinz Field, go from a grayer scenery to now all of a sudden just a, a beautiful show of pink here a few years later. And it's just really great to get out here. You can see people biking. This is just a few days ago, people getting out and enjoying the spring. It's a, as we'll talk a bit later, we talk about some of the benefits that just the added scenery and added uh, enthusiasm to recreate on our rivers is certainly one benefit of having all of these new uh, blossoming redbud trees. We've included mulch beds, uh, not just planting a single tree, but making it a larger landscape project. This is that same mulch bed, just looking in the other direction. You can see how well some of that complementary material is filled in. And people really like to get out and plant with us. They like to come out and see downtown in the background or see the gateway clipper rolling by, or maybe they'll come to a, a Steelers football game one day and they can say, hey, we planted those trees that are just outside the stadium. It, it really gets people jazzed about coming out to the city and getting them to plant trees with us. And just like we have many trees, we have lots and lots of pizza. I don't even want to think about the level of pizza we've all eaten over the past few years, but uh, certainly uh, supporting local businesses too. We're not just buying trees, we're buying food and materials to plant all of our trees too. A few years ago, we, we lost a few trees in the North Shore. And some of you may look at this tree and recognize what you're looking at. That was a beaver. Uh, perhaps it was a lost beaver or just a very hungry beaver, but uh, in one night, uh, quite a few trees disappeared and it was uh, close to 20 to be exact. And if you're looking at this picture, Point State Park and the fountain would be just off to your right, Heinz Field just off to your left. And even though it was quite shocking at first to see all these trees uh, go away quite suddenly, it, it is also a, just a testament to what we're doing and supporting native wildlife. And just, uh, Frank, you've mentioned how how much the rivers have improved over the years. I think it would have been unheard of uh, several years ago to think of some of a beaver living in some of these rivers, but here, here we have one that's obviously pretty happy. So, um, yeah, I had a few people call me from out of state saying, "Are you worried about your trees?" And I was like, "No, I'm thankful that we have beavers and better wildlife uh, coming back to the city." Absolutely, and, and we've since replaced. We've planted more red buds, and they have. Uh, caging around them as well. So unless the beavers carry bolt cutters, I don't think they'll get them the second time around. Mm -hmm. Do you want to mention there are some white flowering red buds along the North Shore? Uh, most of them are pink, but we can get other cultivars that make different colors. And this one is a royal white uh, flowering red bud. And what's another way to make a red bud white? Maybe you have a pink one and you wish it could be white. Well, we'll get some snow. I, I snapped this photo yet. It's not on the North Shore. This is an unrelated planting project, but uh, still, I thought it was quite beautiful to see the snow on those, those fresh pink flowers. Just here at the end of the North Shore is the Carnegie Science Center. And a few years ago, you may have noticed if you're familiar with Pittsburgh that the Science Center did a very large construction project. They redid the whole uh, front and riverside access to their facility. They added wonderful rain gardens to capture rainwater off the roof and they wanted some trees and all of these material. And so what we did is we were able to complement this rain garden initiative and some of the education that goes with it with our Redbud project. And Alicia, you worked very closely with 
the folks here at the Science Center. So talk a bit more about how they actually incorporated red buds and stormwater management into uh, their visitors that come to come to visit their science. Yeah, sure. Um, so this, I think this is a very cool site. Like Brian is saying, we have a lot of very nice, awesome view sites um, for the Red Bud Project. But I think the Science Center not only has a really great view, but I think it also has a lot of really awesome education opportunities. And I think we're gonna see that partnership with the Science Center grow more and more to increase educational opportunities around this space. So as Brian said, there's, a, there's two rain gardens. There's one up top in the building and there's one lower down near the river. And then there's a lot of beautifully landscaped area that includes trees, a lot of shrubs, a lot of perennials. So it's not only beautiful, but it's also very functional. And as I'm sure most of you know, the Carnegie Science Center, their, their focus is based on education. So there are actually are a number of signs around this area that both visitors to the Science Center and trail users can look at and learn more about what is this, why is it here, how it fits into the landscape and what it is doing. So we're hoping to build on that some and really build in more education with this space because I think there's a lot of great opportunities here. Um, we actually, last year, we partnered with the Student Conservation Association to do some educational tours with their summer high school crew. So we had some summer, um, we had some of their crews out and a coworker and I walked them around and talked about what is a rain garden? What is this doing? What is planted here? And had them really thinking about the benefit of these rain gardens and also the benefits of the trees that we planted around and in these rain gardens and get them to think about why it's here and what it's doing. And it's not only aesthetically pleasing, I mean, these flowers are beautiful every year. It's also providing some habitat. We've seen a number of bees and pollinators on these flowers. We've found a couple of bunnies hanging out in these areas. And I think it's important for people to realize that this is, has a lot of reasons as to why it's here. It's taking in water, it's providing beauty, it's also providing shade. So I think we're gonna continue to look into more and more educational opportunities around this space in partnering with the Science Center. And I hope that maybe in the future we can have, maybe they'll have some tours with their visitors um, or maybe they'll have their, they have some summer camps with children. We can involve them or a lot of different layers of education around this space. But I think it's very special and I look forward to see what else we're gonna do with it. Yeah, thanks Alicia. It's been really exciting to just get out there and just have this, more unique uh, connection to to not just here at the city, but many people who are visiting will still come here as school districts and their field trips uh, from all over the western part of the state. So uh, the red buzz and, and and the rain gardens are really reaching out to to quite a lot of people, and I think that's a great a great aspect to have at their science center. We also planted several trees here as well too. You can see Jeff, Alicia, and I here doing the tree demonstration at the science center. This was before all the rain gardens came in. And it really just made quite a difference here. You can see how well these trees are doing now. Uh, we come back and water them, of course. You can see these green gator bags. They have, have 20 gallons of water in each bag and they have small holes at the bottom that they drain very slowly throughout the, the upcoming weeks. So lots of watering, uh, making everything look good, come back and prune. And then the trees really respond well. The, the trees give a big thank you every spring when they come out to bloom. Uh, just beautiful views here from the city and I love the shot of Brad out with his drone the other day. It's just a, a great background and wonderful blooms there. We'll move up the river a bit and I think one of my favorite projects is this one that we've been doing on River Avenue because uh, it still adds the beautiful pink blossoms but also adds in a, a, a much more complementary aspect of, of how do we improve our, our watersheds, how do we improve the areas along all of these trails and so coming up from the city, you can see the convention center here just across the river here behind the Redbud. We wanted to just improve this trail quite a bit more. So hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of trees have been planted all the way up to the 16th Street Bridge. And we've taken this area that many people bike by all the time. I, I love biking on these, these rivers uh, along the trails. I know Jeff does as well. And um, just making that completely change with just, just uh, some trees and, and getting these people out to plant with us, it makes just quite a difference. But most of this area along the trail was, was just a wall-to-wall -wall invasive plant material. It was honeysuckle and knotweed and privet. And well, we had to get rid of quite a lot of that. So we came in and thanks to some partners with the city forestry division, and then also doing some contracted work afterwards, managed to take these invasive plants out and come back to an area that we can plant with all of our redbud trees. And 
just just quite an amazing transformation that this trail has taken over the last few years. It was sometimes hard even to to know where you were on the trail to oh that is the 16th Street Bridge far in the distance and uh, well now here it is as well. Um, just a remarkable transformation, I think, for this section of the trail. And then of course we brought the trees down. We had several different tree deliveries. We unload them all, including the switch hazel, uh, putting on a nice yellow show for us on the day we took the trees off the trailer. Get everything in place. Sometimes it's pretty foggy in the morning. It's still early for us when we start the day and get everything in place, but uh, it tends to warm up and the sun usually comes out later by the end of the day once the, the volunteers start to show up. Lots of people at various parts of the trail, lots of happy faces, lots of excitement from the bikers and hikers and dog walkers as they come by, thanking us for putting in all these trees. And after the big trees were put in, we came in with all the smaller material. These, these tree tubes contain smaller trees uh, from shrubs all the way up to larger landscape trees. And uh, it's a quite, quite the mix. We'll go from sycamores to pawpaws to dogwoods. And what we wanted to do here was plant a lot of material very close together because we want to have a nice dense amount of native plant material. Hopefully that will help outcompete invasives as they come in. We're going to do some seeding uh, along the ground cover to make sure that uh, we're just filling in every gap we can with as much native material as possible. And of course, Melissa is out here quite a lot restaking these tubes. They don't always stand straight up. I sometimes cringe when a storm comes through and I know that we have to go back out and put some tree tubes back to where they belong. We always tell people at the, at the tree demo, if they want, they can name their tree. And to our uh, pleasure, we found that uh, one group had actually done that. They named their tree Athena. Uh, and then we saw that in the winter as we came back to set some tubes up. And it's always amazing. We can go from a, a winter scene like this to then the next spring, just some beautiful pink blossoms. Uh, when you come along this trail, I think there's just some great walls of red buds on each side. I encourage you to get out and take a look and enjoy the show that they put on every spring. And just a great shot from above. I also love trains and Brad timed it out just, just well to get some red buds with the train going there in the background across the railroad trestle. So uh, get out, enjoy the red buds, enjoy spring, and uh, I don't think the red buds will let you down. So a little quickly here, we're, we'll, we've got a few minutes left. I'm going to go through a few few more sections. Uh, Point State Park had a lot of red buds already, but we wanted to bring some more in, bring some other plant material in, and we planted within the Point Park itself, also the entryway here on the outer part of the point, heading into Gateway Islands. And also, if you take a walk across from PNC Park, you'll see it along the 10th Street Bypass. There's quite a few red buds there as well. If you're coming off the Fort Pitt Bridge right into downtown, this is the first thing you would have seen a few years ago, uh, a large lawn with no tree cover, looking at the Gateway Islands here uh, further on in the view. And then we brought several groups of people in. We had several volunteers from Pitt. They planted lots of trees for us and we had uh, great support from uh, DC and our staff at, at Point State Park. And everybody was happy to take a little baby red bud back home with them. This is the view of our tree delivery from directly within the point. How do we get the trees in there around the fountain? Well, thanks to DC and our staff guiding us along the way, we were able to get the truck and trailer right down there on the point. So when you, when you watch Channel 4 News or 11 tonight, uh, you can see the view of the point. We actually were able to drive our truck and trailer right down there through the state park. And when you take a look out here, you'll see all these tree wells that now have some great shrubs and plant material at the bottom, a nice beautiful tree in the center. The Gateway Islands, we took out a lot of this uh, existing ground cover, this euonymus, and cut that away, brought in a bun bunch of different sizes of trees. So we've got the red buds, we have the pink from them, we have different colors and textures and sizes, the grasses that wave in the wind, we've got evergreen ink berries and, and, and junipers. So just a, a beautiful change of the scenery here as you just come into downtown. We wanted to have some trees up on Mount Washington. So whenever you're kind of at the point and you look up, you can see some pink on the hillsides. And that goes all the way from the West End Overlook in the Elliott neighborhood down to Grandview Park above the Liberty Bridge. Not all tree planting days are sunny. We do have some that are rainy, but nonetheless, we always get out, we have a good time. And I think the volunteers up here just really enjoyed having such a great view in the background. Uh, it was quite remarkable to have Heinz Field and the Science Center and the point all in the same view when we're, when we're doing our plantings. 
Further down on Grandview Avenue, this is probably the view of uh, from Mount Washington you may be most familiar with as you head right along this uh, very notable roadway here at the top of the, uh, of the hillside. We had volunteers out to plant many of the trees along the flatter area up against the road, but we wanted to plant further down the hill. And how do we get volunteers safely, or, or how do we get trees rather planted safely on these, on these slippery hillsides? Well, we call on the Pittsburgh Search and Rescue Team and they practice their rappelling. And we said, hey, would you guys like to come out, rappel down the cliff, but take a few trees down there while you're, while you're doing that. And so we had them uh, coming down here with Heinz Field in the background, just planting trees on the hill. We also partnered with the Search and Rescue Club, or, or sorry, the Explorers Club, that is uh, further up Grandview Avenue. And uh, the Explorers Club are really great. They took some baby seedlings down there and planted them around where some of these trees had been uh, uh, removed because they had died earlier. So a great partnership to, to get trees in different places. Uh, further down Emerald View Park is the East Sycamore Saddle where the East Sycamore Trailhead is at. We planted several red buds there along with more of our beautiful witch hazels. And we took this small area up here at the top of the trail right when you first come in at the trailhead, took out a, a, a large section of invasive shrubs and now we have all these tree tubes with baby red buds and um, spice bush and pawpaws and just some great native trees and shrubs that are gonna be growing there throughout the next few years. And down at Grandview Park as well, a great view shed there uh, up at the, the bandstand. If, uh, this is what a red bud looks like just before it's about ready to pop while it just teases you a bit with some, some pink at the ends, uh, great views of the red buds in the city from that location. Along the south shore, we planted from Station Square down by the River Hound Stadium to the Smithfield Street Bridge. Uh, the Sheraton there is the largest hotel uh, in Station Square. You can see lots of red buds along the parking lot. This is the soccer stadium here in the background. Uh, we get some pink from dogwoods as well. That's a dogwood on the left, but also a, a pink leaved red bud on the right. This is Carolina Sweetheart Red Bud. Uh, gets some variegation with some white and pink coloration as it grows. Here's the Smithfield Street Bridge, great views of the city in the background there. And also uh, the Glass House building, which is just adjacent to that area. Uh, we planted several river birch and red buds uh, along their, their uh, trail property there in the front. And uh, everything has been taking quite nicely, I think. There's a lot of coordination there too, Brian. Mm -hmm. I, mean, you, I mean, think about the property owners and the different groups that you had to work with just to get permission to do the work that you wanted to do. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, and Frank, you did a lot of you did a lot of the heavy lifting on that. Uh, well, on some of them, but I mean, it, yeah, there are. I mean, there were there were there was a lot of coordination there. It's not just a you can't just go plant trees wherever you want to plant trees. So mm -hmm. there is some challenges. There are challenges there. Definitely, definitely. Uh, last site is Frank Curdo Park up in the Hill District. Do you want to mention this cultivar of red bud? This is called pom pom red bud. Doesn't have the traditional shaped flowers. It looks more like a pom-pom that a cheerleader may use. Uh, so it's a really, really great cultivar to red bud. We've been able to plant a few of them. Uh, but Frank Curto Park is just right above the Strip District, uh, overlooking uh, more of the Allegheny view shed of the city. Great views from up here. Also wonderful smells as well. All of the restaurants around lunchtime, the beautiful smells of lunch coming from the Strip. I enjoy that quite a bit. The red buds were blooming at the time of planting. So people got to plant some red buds actually in bloom at the time. And uh, they really responded well with some even just more blooms from there. So let's talk large about credit to, I wanted to say one thing about volunteers too. There's a large credit to those folks that come out and plant these. I mean, they're they're very conscientious. They really care about what they're doing. They 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 really do a good job. I mean, the that's part of the success that we have here is that you know they that there's a good training program and they actually um, implement it really really well surprisingly absolutely absolutely yeah and that, that's one of the biggest things we want uh you know not just bringing pretty pink trees into the city but getting that community engagement so having having great groups of volunteers really is uh, is the main way that we're able to make this project a success of course um and i think as we look at what were the goals of the project it wasn't necessarily initially to focus on the more traditional benefits of tree planting. Certainly trees give us great air. They make uh, air quality better. They, they sequester carbon, they improve rivers and, and storm by reducing stormwater. But um, 
to bring pink flowering trees in is more of a celebration of spring. It was more aesthetically based and culturally based. And by focusing on those primary benefits, we're able then as a, as a secondary getting as well the environmental benefits that are important to the pollinators, the riparian areas, the carbon, the air quality. So by bringing in beautiful spring trees, we're able to then realize these other things that uh, make tree plantings to be important. And we're improving the community, we're getting people together, we're creating wonderful green spaces, we're calming traffic, we're welcoming visitors, and just by, by giving someone a tree, I mean, that, that's, that's, that's a beautiful thing. I can't think of something more that I would want in this past year uh, of, of troubling times than to just have someone just give me a smile and give me a tree. And, it, and it, it's, a, it's a beautiful tree to do. So that's really, really quite a nice thing to have. Uh, so how can you get involved? Um, well, come out and plant with us. Uh, you've seen all those pictures of volunteers. Uh, that could be you, or maybe it was already you. And if it was, I thank you for joining us for tree plantings in the past. I hope you'll come out again. Um, thank you to our WPC members. Uh, appreciate everything that you do to not just support us and, and our planting projects, but to support uh, our conservancy as a whole. We have many other departments from falling water to land conservation, uh, to our gardens that you see along the highways. So uh, it, it is through your support and, and uh, that, that we're able to do wonderful things like that. And if you're not a member already, but you'd like to do so, feel free to visit our website at waterlandlife.org and you can uh, follow the links to uh, find out more about membership from there. Do stay tuned for a fall 2021 tree planting schedule. We are eagerly looking forward to volunteers again, and I hope that we'll be able to do so uh, perhaps as early as later this year. If you take any photos of the red buds uh, or any red bud, doesn't have to be a red bud here, it can be a red bud anywhere across the country or quite frankly, across the world, there's red buds all over the world, different species. Feel free to uh, tag us, hashtag PGH redbud, and uh, we'll be able to, to share that in our following. And if you'd like as well, uh, if you're getting tired of Zoom meetings and you're Zoom fatigued, uh, you can add some pop to your virtual backgrounds. Uh, you may have seen Jeff on here earlier. He had some red buds in his background. So you can go to our website and uh, download some images and perhaps uh, Make your, make your colleagues and friends happier when you join for a, a Zoom meeting. But, uh, but Frank, Alicia, Melissa, Jeff, um, you know, thank you for being on here with me and, and, and thank you to all of you for listening and, and for watching our, our, our story of the Red Bud Project. It's, it's just wonderful to, to see all these photos and to, to hear, from, hear from all of us and, and just see how wonderful this, this project can be. So, uh, any, any last comments, Frank? Any last words? You you, you are the red bud man after all. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I mean, uh, after five years, it's it's uh, it's really starting to make an impact, and I'm I'm hopeful that um, it will continue to get better every year as the trees begin to grow. So uh, it's uh, it's a uh, it's a great project. It's just a great project in general, and and credit to everybody who participates in it. I mean, it's a uh, it's a big 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 lift. So. It's, uh, it's turning out well. Thank you. Yeah, yeah well, thanks, Frank. And well, Jen, I guess we'll, I'll turn it back to you. And uh, if there's any questions, we can do our best to answer them. We do have some questions. Thanks, Brian. Uh, first one is, will you consider planting the eastern side of the WPC McKnight Road Jug Handle Garden with a continuous swath of red buds? So people want red buds everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I can't complain about that one. Um, I'll take a stab at that one. Uh, we'd love to see, yeah, red buds far afield. That, uh, the focus of the Pittsburgh Red Bud Project is um, closer to in and around downtown Pittsburgh and along the river. So we currently, um, the scope of, of the Pittsburgh Red Bud Project is, is more right down around downtown. Um, but you might want to take it up Take that question up with some of our garden staff and we can follow up with contact information on that um, and, uh, for Steve on that one. So, Okay. Um, we have a nice comment that WPC just planted a tree on my curb last week. Thank you. So I wanted to pass that along to you guys. Um, let's see. Here's one. I'd love to volunteer when you open again to plant trees. I have some other Latino and non-Latino friends as well that would love to participate and make this land our own in this way. Who should we contact? You should contact Alicia. Yeah. 
That would be me. You'll see my email on the bottom there, um, awhirly at paconserve.org. So you can reach out to me. We'd love to have you. We always get um, a nice variety of groups that come out and help with these plantings. And I don't know if you remember, Brian, but we had a gentleman who was all the way from, I think originally from Spain. We, there was a conference yeah, in, yeah. in town. So we had people from all over the place. So yes, please come and help. We would love to have your help. I hope we're doing volunteer events this fall. There are many ornamental flowering trees available for Pittsburgh's planting zone. Why is the focus on redbuds? That's a good question. Um, redbuds, of course, are native and many of the ornamental trees that you'll find are uh, cultivars of, of non-native species, which is not necessarily a bad thing that very few of them are actually considered to be invasive. So when you think of your ornamental cherries or your crab apples or uh, lilacs, um, you know, those are, those are good trees to plant still. But the red bud, the red bud has always been here and you'll see it growing uh, along. I, I drive 28 quite a bit and there's lots of red buds above 28. There's red buds out towards um, uh, Logan's Ferry. I, I drive out there a lot and I love seeing them and and so you'll, you'll benefit a lot of the habitat around here uh, by planting those red buds specifically. And, and if you do notice too, I get a lot of questions about red buds blooming really early. We got really warm this year quickly and all the cherries bloomed right away. And I, I think that cherries, uh, all of our non-native uh, ornamental trees like cherries, crab apples, they're more easily fooled by that early warm push of weather. Whereas the red buds are a little more patient they wait longer and then um, the flowers then are able to persist longer as well. So that, that, those, are, those are a few of the benefits of, of planting those red buds. Here's a volunteer question. Um, do you find that volunteers trained as tree tenders are beneficial to your effort? Is there more work that tree tenders can be doing? Absolutely, we, we have tree tenders. Alicia, you're probably more familiar with with how frequently tree tenders uh, volunteer. Yeah, we, we um, I'd say we get a couple tree tenders at, at almost every planting. I think they're, they're very beneficial because they've learned a lot of the practices through their courses and they can help with a lot of the plantings. But like I said, anybody's welcome to come help plant trees, but tree tenders are most certainly welcome because they have some of that baseline knowledge already. Great. Will the red buds spread naturally? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going to answer that, Frank. <laughs> yes, they're, they're, they, are, they can live a very long time. You, you can get 70 years out of a red bud tree. I'd say in an urban condition, probably, what, 25 years maybe? Um, and, but they self-seed so fast. Um, they're, uh, yeah, they're very prolific. You don't have to worry about um, them going away. They self-seed easily. So I'm hoping 150 years from now, you can come to Pittsburgh and there'll be red buds everywhere. So, um, but, uh, but I have a small yard and uh, I have to pull them out because they're, they're, there would be hundreds in my little postage stamp yard. So um, from one tree, you can get hundreds. Yeah, that's, that's a good point to add to the, uh, the different ornamental trees that many of those ornamental flowering trees that are not red bud, uh, sometimes they, they're actually sterile. Uh, they either produce fruit that is not viable or they may not produce fruit at all, but the red buds uh, produce a lot of seed. Uh, so, so that's a great way to, um, to have, them, have them spread and to introduce more red bud trees throughout your property, so. Right. And, I, and if I would add, if I may, that, you know, in, in the more managed spaces, for example, like the North Shore Riverfront Park or the Great Lawn, we're not gonna let it become a forest of red buds, um, but they are great at naturalizing. So for example, like the restoration areas along River Avenue, the Mount Washington hillside, these are locations where we want them to, you know, spread and provide all those benefits that we're looking for. So. Uh, Roberta in Ithaca would like to know if you will have the Red Bud Project t-shirts for sale. We are working on that. So we don't have that up and running yet. Um, but uh, we would do, we would, we would let folks know probably through social media and on our website when we get that up and running, okay. they are popular. So a few people are, have asked if the meeting, um, if this webinar is um, taped and I just wanna let people know that yes, we will have it available on our website um, 
Waterland Life on our webinars page um, shortly after, probably within a day or two. So just wanna let everybody know that. Um, here's a question, is this a nationwide effort? I saw wide swaths all the way up through Virginia. I wouldn't say it's a, a, a nationwide effort that we're necessarily joining with other people, but definitely red buds are celebrated all throughout the all throughout the country. There, there's a great red bud festival in Virginia. I forget the name of the town, but they're probably the biggest red bud festival in the country. And and you'll find red buds all across the world. There are different species. There's a western red bud that can uh, grow up throughout the southwestern United States and the Mexico. There's um, Cerasa siliquastrum, the European red bud. There's a, a Chinese red bud. So there are uh, really red buds on on most of our continents. So I could definitely see red buds being a way to uh, maybe maybe there's some sister cities out there that that have red buds in each of their cities. Uh, who's a sister city to Pittsburgh? Maybe we could see if red buds grow there. Cleveland. <laughs> uh, can I buy red buds to plant in my own yard? Well, red buds are readily available at many nurseries. So um, if you'd like to find a red bud, I'm, I'm sure there's, uh, I'm sure your local nursery probably has at least uh, one or two uh, types of red buds there. Mm -hmm. We get a lot of our smaller red buds from Tree Pittsburgh, who uh, another nonprofit here in Pittsburgh, they're a great partner of ours. They do, you could check out their website. They do tree giveaways throughout the year and you can sign up and they do have some red buds. Um, but it's, it's, um, you know, as Brian says, there's a, there's, you know, they're probably available at a lot of local nurseries. Um, we have a, a viewer that wants to mention that the flowers are edible and look great on a salad. And I just want to mention that indeed Brian and Alicia, uh, last year during lockdown did some great, um, cooking demo, uh, videos for us for social media. And I think uh, Alicia, you made biscuits and pizza and sandwiches and pancakes and Brian, you know, Brian made pancakes and I think there was soup and chicken and salad, you name it. It was great. So um, we ran a, a, uh, something on a little slideshow on Facebook last week with images of some of the delicious gourmet dishes that they created last year. So yes, indeed, they are yeah. edible. I'll turn that over to you guys. Yeah, Frank, you mentioned uh, how the flowers look like a pea flower, and 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 red bud is in, in the pea family that it's considered a legume. So if you uh if you pick a red bud flower off the tree and eat it, I, I think it tastes a little bit kind of like sweet pea. Yeah, I'm I'm trying jelly right now. I'll tell I'll let you know how it works out. <laughs> um, here's a question about soil amendment. I live in Marshall Township, almost on the county line with Butler County in a tiny lot with clay soil. What can I do to amend the soil and help the tree thrive in a full sun so southern exposure? The red buds are, are pretty resilient. You can plant them in, in quite a lot of different areas and they, they will grow well. Um, na natively, you'll find them on more of a north facing slope where they get more shade, but you know, as you've seen through the, the different photos we show, we've shown that um, full sun on the, on, on the North Shore, the trees will still grow uh, well there too. And as far as soil amendment goes, we, we do have soil amendments for each site. If we have at least every site is loosened and then if there happens to be any non-soil material like slag or rocks or bricks, that's taken out and topsoil put back in. But if you have a very heavy clay soil, one of the worst things you could do is take out a, a section of it and replace it with topsoil because then it's almost like you've created a, um, a, a teacup or a, or a wine glass where you have really nice soil for that wine glass part and you have all this clay soil around it and water will not be able to drain very readily from that loose topsoil into the neighboring clay. So the best thing you can do if you have a lot of clay is just um, keep a lot of it and that'll allow the tree just to get used to all of that clay from the get-go. And the roots will find a way, and we've planted red buds in pretty heavy clay soil too, and they've, they've worked out pretty well. So I, I wouldn't recommend changing it too much. Um, one of our viewers commented that um, Audubon Society Western Pennsylvania has red buds on sale at Beechwood Farms. So it uh, looks like that's the end of the questions for now. 
And I think uh, no one has any other questions. We'll go back to Tom Saunders, our CEO, for some final comments. Thank you all so much for the great presentations. That was fascinating. It's just such a cool project. It's so wonderful for our, our riverbanks and our city and our community and our region. And thank you all for managing to carry it forward during the pandemic with all the, um, you know, the remote work and social distancing. You've been very impressive to be able to keep this going. And for everyone who attended today, thank you for your participation and your volunteering and your support and interest. We couldn't do any of this without all of you all. So we'll keep you posted as we plan other webinars from our other programs over coming weeks. And uh, thank you and have a great afternoon. Bye-bye.